Okay, so in this video, we're going to take a look at Ames House Price Dataset. That dataset is available on Kaggle with uh, quite an amount of code artifacts available. Um, you can also check out the data description here, um, which uh, maps out basically the what, what's in the dataset, 2,930 observations, 82 uh, variables, so quite a lot of columns of data. Originally, uh, the data set, it was collected from 2006 to 2010, or the, the data uh, contains information uh, relating to um, properties from the period 2006, 2010. And it comes from the Ames Assessor's Office, who are responsible um, at a municipal level uh, in Ames for estimating the property values, um, and while the assessor's office is not responsible for imposition of taxes, um, much of local tax is raised through uh, property uh, taxation. So local services like policing, uh, road maintenance, uh, schools come through local taxation in the US. So you can imagine there is a certain value here in uh, maintaining very detailed information on uh, properties and then being able to attribute a value uh, to properties. So the data set, to say the least, is extensive, um, but we might understand why such a high level of granularity is maintained in that so much that uh, if you're a local government, if you're a city hall and you've got to apply some kind of tax model, you need reliable um, estimates of uh, property valuation. So the more detail uh, garnered uh, in relation to property, uh, the the more effective the um, uh, the assessor's office will be in identifying properties of higher, lower, uh, middle value. So if we go back in, we can check also that there's a paper from uh, De Kock, who's an academic, um, and he sets out a little bit, he's teaching philosophy uh, here in terms of why he turned to uh, look for another data set. I think it was originally set out as an alternative to the Boston House housing data set. And also he provides a description, but not complete description, but a decent overview of what's in the data set. So um, talks about 80 variables, um, and uh, when was the property built? How big was the lot? How many square feet of living space in, in the dwelling? Is the basement finished? How many bathrooms are there? In general, 20 continu continuous variables relate to the various area dimension for each observation and so on. So quite a bit of detail there, but also uh, when we just run through uh, the description here, it's not a a complete description of each variable, right? That's also uh, worth pointing out. Um, okay, so um, also just to note uh, the the uh, Python uh, code that I'm using here, the GitHub source is coming from uh, Inria. Inria is um, uh, the, the French National Research Institute and um, they uh, assist um, scientists in providing code um, and have their own set of interesting uh, repositories, projects uh, that you can follow up here. So um, uh, sort of an interesting um, set of uh, repositories with uh, mainly Python code that um, um, uh, academics uh, can use and um, deploy in their own uh, scientific endeavors. Okay, so I'm following their approach. Um, and um, again, the data set is uh, 2,930 observations, that's rows and 82 variables, so that's columns. Um, and then uh, we can see some of the information. So the um, order number, parcel identif identification number, um, oh, 
Okay, and we can see here the definitions are laid out. MS subclass identifies the dwelling type uh, in the sale, nominal MS zoning, uh, general zoning classification. Uh, so lots and lots of detail. In fact, um, so much detail, in fact, uh, part of maybe some of the initial um, development and processing of the data is to try and narrow down those variables that are most closely aligned with the sales price. Um, and um, there's probably quite a degree of overlap uh, between, you know, if there's some kind of specification relating to the garage, uh, the, um, the detail uh, might be duplicated to some degree or there's some degree of uh, overlap. So it might be in some respects trying to pick out those uh, most more pivotal um, instrumental variables that are signal the value in the property. Uh, and again, um, the approach that we will follow eventually is we'll take a look at uh, John C. Hull's uh, work, but for the moment, just to explore a little bit the data. So there are five observations that might be removed for analysis, simplification, especially in the educational setting. Um, I think this is more about the um, the information that was captured by de Kock himself and part of his philosophy around uh, why he developed the data set uh, and what purpose he put it to and how it was obtained from the assessor's office and in, in names. Um, okay, so uh, as we go down through, um, a lot of those headings pop up. It might be interesting to uh, graph them. Um, and again, sort of an extraordinary amount of detail, uh, sort of overwhelming, right? And maybe one of the you know initial approaches that we would adopt here is to maybe use a lasso ridge or uh, elastic net type regression uh, to filter a little bit which of the coefficients are, are uh, key uh, in determining uh, or, or delivering value. Um, so if we run this, uh, we'll get an, an error, right? Because our data hasn't been loaded in. Um, I went to um, the Hull website, Hull, John C. Hull website. And then down to machine learning business. And then I came across to his data. And I obtained the data from here, a full data set, and then I I download it, right? So if we open that up, take a look in, right, this is what we have. Um, and I suppose we could remove the first, so if we delete, so enable editing, and delete, so just delete uh, the first three rows, they're empty. And then we'll file save as, um, and I'll just say original data, uh, and a CSV file. CSV, come down here, and uh, maybe original data. Okay, and save. Okay, then I go back into our collab and I'll upload uh, the data from our download folder. Original data and just verify that it's a CSV file. So of the tree here, it's um, it's this one, and then open, and then um, I just have to make sure that when it comes into the uh, down into the content folder, that the name here, Control Z, corresponds with. So. The name here that we have corresponds. So I'll just say original data. In fact, might be the easiest original. And try to um, 
adhere to the so it's underscore and then data csv so i'll just check original data dot csv and read that in and the data has come in and i'll just check aims housing so the data object we created same as housing. We read that I've taken the data from John C. Hulls because I want to come back again and take a look at that. And then just a few initial impressions in terms of descriptive statistics. So I guess uh, the, the most striking thing about the data set is that there's a huge amount of the data. Also, um, if you'd like, uh, you know, there, there is available from John C. Hall's um, web page here, the definitions. So it might be useful to take a look at the definitions that he provided. I think it's just a little bit more concise. Right, so if you want to follow that, it uh, might be useful. Um, and uh, also, uh, John has provided here um, a HTML version of Python, of a Python script that we could run later on. But for the moment, uh, I'm not going to do that. I'm just looking at the data set itself and curating it a little bit and just eyeballing what's in there using the um, INRIA, so the French uh, GitHub, right? Just uh, the uh, Institut National de Recherche en Sciences et Technologie du Numérique, so the uh, link to the uh, GitHub from France. And um, what I found more useful, perhaps, than other GitHubs or Kaggles was, was just the, the clean um, visualizations that were provided. So we could look at the first five um, uh, house prices at two hundred and eight thousand five hundred hundred and eighty one thousand five hundred and so on. Again, the prices from are from two thousand and six, and we could to take um, a histogram and see the spread of housing. Again, uh, Ames uh, is a university town, quite a small town in comparison to bigger cities, and not on the coast. Right, and quite far north, uh, nearly as north as, um, I think, Chicago. Uh, so you have probably, um, you know, uh, temperatures in winter drop down, I would imagine. So you have this type of house price distribution. It's not uh, California type house prices. It's more Midwest, but also 2006 to 2010. And then information that's available, then here we can go through 2908 so that's as we had anticipated and looking for uh, the data types and the non-null counts so there's some missing data in in spots where we're not reaching the 2908 maybe you have some data that's missing and then quite a nice but takes a little bit of time for the date to come up. So am I missing here um, a library? So I'll just go back and make sure all the libraries have been brought in. So import pandas we have. And just make sure I have the pipe plot and matplotlib seaborn all set up. So let's run again, see Okay, so numerical data. So we've broken down. So we've uh, a list of the numerical data, which we separate out from the categorical numerical histogram. And what are the issues? Uh, so three frames. Okay, layout nine and nine. Um, okay, work before that histogram oh, 
Okay, so our numerical uh, data histogram didn't work out. So um, we made an adjustment, just a small adjustment. And when it runs, it takes a little bit of time to execute fully, but um, given the amount of data that's involved, uh, but seems to work fine. And again, we can look here at what's provided in terms of our data set. Now, again, sort of useful if we maybe put to one side here and redimension and just go back to the definitions and try to explore. So this again is the numerical data and try as we come down, look at the data available here. So we have nominal data and uh, so the MS subclass um, and we have the distribution, if you like, of um, each of the different categories. So the 20 denotes here one story, 1946 newer all styles, uh, 30, one story, 1945 and older, um, and so on. So you can see actually so much information has been conveyed here. Uh, the lot frontage, again, if we look at the, if we try to come down and look at the Nagensen, um, the lot frontage. So let's see if we can find, we have lot configured. Lot frontage is continuous linear feet of street connected to property. So it's the amount of um, space that opens up out into the street uh, or connected to the street. So um, may well be if you have a very narrow entrance and a very narrow front on the property, while the property could be big, the lot frontage would be small. And there's some nuance in that, right? Uh, the lot area, so most lot areas are quite small. Uh, there may well be an outlier here that might well explain why we have these very vast numbers here, but the bulk cluster. And so again, if we take a look at the lot area, lot size and square feet. So I suspect most of the action is here and maybe one outlier or so somewhere. That's why we, we reach up into these kind of extraordinary values here. The overall quality, um, if you come down and look at the overall quality. Now, uh, as far as I remember, that's quite a significant driver in the pop property valuation. Um, and we might get, looks like it's sort of continuous, um, it's categorical, um, but ranges from zero to 10. Right, and uh, quality, one would imagine would have a big bearing on the valuation, right? So overall quality, uh, excellent. So one to 10, in fact, excellent, very good, good. So it's basically, we have here a distribution of the quality. I think the median typical value is just there about five. And overall condition, uh, something similar. So one would imagine overall quality, overall condition would be closely uh, aligned to each other. Uh, year the property was built, so quite a lot of construction activity here in the uh, 2000s, in the period 2006, I don't know about 2010, may have dropped off. And you might be able to track the 1920s, then the 1930s, there was a, a fall often in US under construction, then period post-war period growth again, drop off the 1980s because of interest rates and so on. Sometimes you can track the number of properties uh, that were built uh, based on the economic circumstances and related back to those economic circumstances. So again, it's actually quite um, instructive to go through each of the, work through each of the graphs here and try to link back to the definitions provided. And again, one can't help but feel not every bit of data is going to be extremely useful. The question is going to be, how do we perhaps put this into kind of a capsule form that sort of works? And if we were trying to you know, act as the assessor, uh, while you would curate all this data and that would be very valuable, uh, possibly um, the curator would also be 
trying to distill the data into a few key factors that are drivers in terms of uh, property valuation. Right. Um, so for tax purposes, uh, property values absolutely important. Um, and uh, now again, we can go down if we if we cancel out that cell, just is, and cancel out um, and go down and go to the next set of variables. So we have the distribution of prices of properties and the frequency. And the bulk property, the you know the large, you know the typical property, is below two hundred thousand. But there are some um, more extreme values. So one, two, three, four, five, six hundred thousand uh, dollars is the upper range. Um, two hundred thousand. Most properties are sub two hundred thousand uh, dollars. Right, that would be the first observation. Uh, we have numerical data types. Uh, the Enria um, notebook here also takes a look at the string data. And let's run that again here. Hopefully, no problems this time. It should be, I'm hoping for a straight run. We can put in a code fix if, if, uh, okay. So we have um, the categorical data set out here. And again, would be useful if we bring to one side here and go back and compare to the definitions, just so that we have an understanding of what's in our data set, right? So if we take the MS zoning and come back here, MS zoning. So to get the definition, MS zoning, general zoning classification of the sale, and it's nominal, right? And then to break that down ever so slightly, we have agricultural, so, uh, commercial, floating village, residential, industrial, residential, high density, residential, low density, residential, low density park, residential medium, and then streets. So is it paved or gravel? Most are paved, alley. Uh, paved or gravel, and then the lot shape. And if it's bulk, properties are regular, but then there's unusual property shapes, and they also are captured in terms of lot shape. I presume regular shape is can be more desirable, but I can imagine also some exceptions to that. Uh, the land contour relates to, I think, the steepness of the property. Right? So L... The L is uh, near flat and then banked and then hillside and then low depression. And then utilities. Um, so here all public utilities, I presume electricity, gas, water and sewage. And then no sewage, electricity, gas and water, but septic tank. So on septic and no SE. WA, electricity and gas only. So presume no electricity, no electricity and gas only, but no water and no septic tank, uh, uh, septic tank, but no mains. So um, water, public water, perhaps not available. Perhaps you have your own well sunk and own septic tank and then yellow. So again, there's a quite a bit of richness in the data. I presume properties that have all the public communities or access to all the public communities uh, would have uh, like for like are more valuable. Um, okay, so again, a certain richness in the data here that we don't observe with other data sets. And that introduces its own nuances and complexity that you would have to deal with. Uh, the neighborhoods then, um, physical location with aims, city limits, Right, so there's uh, Bloomington Heights, Blue Stem, Briardale, Brookside, Clear. I presume each neighborhood uh, area within the town, within the city, uh, commands different uh, valuations. So if we do uh, a map of Ames, 
Google Map Ames. We can identify some of those areas. So let's go in. Now, uh, in terms of the map, um, Des Moines is the, the bigger city. Ames is quite small. And then you seem to be on uh, same latitude, longitude. So um, as far north as Chicago, but further in to the Midwest and then quite away from the coasts, right? Uh, as we zoom in and go into Ames, you can see it's not a, an extraordinarily big uh, town, but um, we possibly can look at how leafy a particular suburb is or how densely populated. So again, it's another metric, this uh, visualization of the satellite also could be a little bit revealing and we may be able to find the specific areas so there's the iowa state university seems to be quite a big campus and then you have the areas around um so we have garden in ames ames so these are kind of uh let's see can we get the name of the places christopher gardner park so it's mainly parks but i think we could probably find the name of the um of the different areas, uh, Brookside Park, their old parks. We could find that the name of Somerset. Okay, it looks like an area. Uh, Bloomington Road. Um, Grand Avenue. Right. So there may be um, names that correspond here. Bloomington Heights, so on. And uh, areas close to the College Green Creek. Creek and so on. Right, Somerset. Right, so the, they're all captured, and again, um, the uh, can look at the incidence of how many uh properties in particular neighborhoods and so on, and the condition of the properties. And again, hugely instructive to compare the definitions against this type of uh, visualization. Compare one against the other. Um, but that's a little bit time consuming. And so perhaps um, we've uh, maybe focused a little bit too much on that. Uh, just come down a little bit further, see what else here is in the data set. That perhaps is it. Um, but it's a useful way of getting eyeballing the data and trying to make sense out of the data. Last thing, I guess, is the correlation matrix. And we might be interested in looking at those variables that have a strong positive correlation with um, sales price. So the overall quality seems to be quite important. Um, the lot frontage, the year built, not insignificant. Uh, the total basement, but that would be linked to the lot size and other measures of the size of the property. I think first floor, second floor, and garage cars, garage areas. So the garage, um, when it was built, also seems to have some stronger correlation. And then what about negative values, maybe the lighter ones? So enclosed porch, and there are the more negative values. Okay, so if we run, we can see here overall quality is highly correlated with the property price, sales price, and the greater living space and the total basement and garage cars. And then for negative, just a few enclosed porch and kitchen above, I uh, have to go back and check. Um, so there's some negative correlations also, but the strong correlations overall quality in the uh, living space, and garage, they seem to consume the line share, but in all likelihood, a lot of overlap on these variables as well. So it may well justify some kind of pruning. Okay, let's leave that there.